Dear friends, in the midst of darkness a light shines, and the darkness does not overcome it. The world into which our Saviour was born is the same as our world. It was a time of great civil strife, wars and rumours of wars, and to be a Jewish baby in Bethlehem was nearly as dangerous then as it can be now. This is the world into which our Saviour comes, not a safe world, not a tidy world, not a world where everything is in order and functioning nicely. No, a world that is bound up in sin and powerless to do anything about it. Which is why he comes. We have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, and we need help. We are lost in darkness, stumbling and blundering blindly. Then the Saviour comes and we can see the light, the light that enlightens everyone has come into the world. Yet this is not entirely good news, and this is something that is often missed when we think about how wonderful it is that the darkness has been driven back by the light. This contrast between the light and the dark, and Jesus as the embodiment, the incarnation of light, is something that runs throughout John's Gospel. But ponder what he says in chapter 3, this is the verdict, light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. The incarnation of God in the form of a little Jewish baby is not just a wonderful truth that we can proclaim from the hilltops, it is also a challenge. It is an event, an event that brings about a crisis. For before light had come, and we were all in darkness, there was no way of knowing what was good. All was equally dark. Yet now, now that the light has come in, now we can see, now we have a standard by which to discern what is of God and what is opposed to God, what is like Jesus and what is against Jesus. We can no longer say, I could not see, I do not know. Now we are put to the test. Now we have to make a decision. Will we embrace the light, turn towards it, move towards it, share in the work of sharing it? Or shall we turn away, letting our own inner darkness, our doubts and our shames, bind us ever tighter into the enemy's grip? I love the final verse in the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, that goes, O Holy Child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. The fragility of that little Jewish boy in the manger is like the fragility of our own faith, our own faith that might be just a little flickering candle flame. And yet that candle flame is the light. And if we nurture it, if we turn to it and we feed it, then it will become stronger and, in time, able to be passed on to others. So this Christmas, spend some time with the babe of Bethlehem. Turn towards him, sit with him a while, marvel at the miraculous mystery that here in the form of a precious baby boy is the king of the universe, through whom all things were made and without whom nothing was made that was made. For in him is light, and his light is the life for all of us. May the peace of the Christ child be with you and all whom you love, this Christmas tide and always. Amen.